You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 of pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. It's time now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Now, here's Grouchy. Are you ready for us to be strong? Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? 
to be back with you. I hate missing. I really do. Yes. Hold up another one, Seymour. You got one more? There you go, you dumb little bastard. <laughs> hey, he's trying to get, get his steak. He... box of steakums in your freezer for you. He's got to get the glass breaks in. He hasn't been able to do that for a while. He's short on steakums. <laughs> I know. He's he, And he gets paid in steakums, so, you know, he... That's that's where it's at. So he's got to get his steakums made up. <laughs> anyway, it is good to be back. I uh, hope that you are holdovers uh, in the chat and at the website listening from the uh, Rick and Stacy show. And uh, if you're not, shame on you for not tuning into them before me. Um, there will be a red wine following me tonight back at the top of the hour. And then that will be the nightcap. They may run a little long, but that will be the nightcap. So there is no Rick and Orty, Amish Robinson, Laurel and Hardy, or Mutt and Jeff. I mean, no, and, hang on. If you're going to do Laurel, you got to change it. It's Laurel and Hardy. There you go. Laurel, Laurel and Hardy. Okay. I like that. That's, that fits really well. So anyway, um, you know, I see, I see faces in the chat room that look you know, familiar. I remember you all don't even think for a minute. I don't recognize you anyway. Uh, we, we got a lot to talk about tonight. We really do. Um, I, you know, things that I don't have scripted out because as Rick always knows, I come in when, when I do a show, I come prepared and then some, um, <laughs> most times, most times, just about 99.9% of the time. So, um, I, we've done a couple on the fly. I know, but, <clears throat> uh, 14 pages tonight, Rick, while you're fixing your plate. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, we're going to get started with, with some stuff I don't have scripted. Um, you know, these, these damn hootie pirates, uh, they, they took a Bangladesh cargo ship. Uh, I don't know what the resolution of that is, if there has been one yet, but, um, damn, you know, I, let's make that dirt glow over there. Let's just end that crap. You know, I, we have such a weak, weak commander in chief and he thinks he's tough, but he's not. He's getting pushed around by any and everybody that wants to. I mean, really the, the little, the little despot teapot over in North Korea might as well start going crazy too. I, you know, why the hell not? Uh, let's see. Oh, did you, did you see the idiot? Um, the the administration's climate change idiot designee John uh, Kerry the other day, he said that Americans would be uh, a lot more okay with the war with Russia and Ukraine if Russia would just cut down their emissions. Yeah, quit driving your tanks and personnel carriers, and we'll be a lot happier about it. <laughs> I kid you not. You can't make this shit up. I mean, these people think they're serious. <laughs> I don't know what to say. I, I just, I throw my hands in the air and I laugh because if I don't, I'm going to cry. And, um, <clears throat> you know, it's just, it's ridiculous. It, it just is. Um, yeah, I mean, just, I, I don't know. We, you know, there was an idiot, um, on Twitter the other day that kept throwing a meme out about, um, Trump's granting of asylum to a certain section of Venezuelans that were already in the country in 2019 um, that had filed for a certain status, not all of them, just a certain status. He granted them asylum. And this idiot tried to say that Trump is the one that let in the guy that killed uh, the illegal immigrant that killed Lake and Riley in Georgia. And, uh, you know, we, we found out very quickly that, uh, 
Mr. Ibera, the illegal alien, um, had come into the country in September of 22, uh, almost three years into Biden's reign of terror. So we know that it wasn't Trump's fault, and um, I think her family knows that it wasn't Trump's fault, uh, as as seen in their uh, very personal photos of, you know, them together. So anyway, um, you know, like I said, lots of things cooking in the world right now, but we got we got a massive gorilla dropped into the room, um, you know, just like a couple of days ago. And that monster is President Biden's budget proposal. I don't know if anybody has seen it yet. It's a disaster. We're going to talk about it um, pretty much ad nauseum here in the first part of the show. Um, His budget is it, it demonstrates how challenge how challenging it can be or is uh, to raise significant tax revenue from a small minority of taxpayers, whether they're wealthy or middle class or you know they're not getting anything from the poor. I mean, they're just not. But in this case, uh, it's wealthy. The budget raises about $1.8 trillion from non-corporate taxpayers over 10 years. Yet following all the rhetoric about the rich not paying their fair share, it, it should stand out that across more than 20 new and expanded taxes, the administration's plan does not even raise enough revenue from wealthy taxpayers to cover new spending proposed in the budget, let alone the projected $20 trillion deficit over the next 10 years. So what's going on? Well, here it is. By promising the American people He would only raise taxes on people earning over $400,000. Biden has made his budget math next to impossible. And we're going to go into this more in detail a little later, but uh, there's simply not enough income at the top of the distribution to cover the projected federal budget deficit let alone a significant expansion in federal spending over the next decade. So what's left to tax? Well, using IRS data, and and trust me, this was not all easy to track down. um, In 2020, the IRS reported that there were 164 million individual tax returns filed with $12.6 $12.6 trillion in adjusted gross income. Now, that includes wages, capital gains, personal business income, uh, in addition to other forms of income and adjustments for things like student loan interest, retirement contributions, uh, uh, gig workers that actually claimed their money um, for to be taxed which I don't know why they would. They should revolt right now and just shut everything down. Um, Anyway, uh, this IRS data can show an upper bound on how much revenue could be extracted from the highest income taxpayers. Now, you can't see the charts, obviously, but you can go look it up. And I'm going to give you a source in a little bit here for that. Uh, The IRS reports statistics by different income groups, separating taxpayers into buckets with AGIs of 200,000, 500,000, 1 million, and 10 million, among others. Now, four income groups um, have information from 2020 on how much total income was earned and taxes paid by each of those groups. 
For example, $2.9 trillion in total AGI, adjusted gross income, was reported by taxpayers earning over $500,000. And they paid a total of $722 billion in federal income taxes, leaving them with about $2.2 trillion after income tax. So basically, they paid a third. Seven times three, 21, 722, 2.2. You can figure it out. It's roughly a third. There were 1.8 million tax returns above $500,000, or about 1% of all returns. In the most extreme case of the federal government taxing all income over $500,000 at a 100% tax rate, confiscating every dollar earned past this point, not all of the $2.2 trillion is available to tax. The graduated income tax system is such that raising the top tax rate only increases taxes on the income in that tax bracket and above. Essentially, everyone's income below the maximum rate is taxed the same. If Congress wants to raise taxes only on people earning over $500,000, the system of progressive tax rates effectively exempts the first 500,000 earned from additional taxes. See where we're going? They can only tax over that amount. So the IRS data shows that for 500,000 and above, that group, there's $2 trillion in taxable income above the $500,000 threshold. These high-income taxpayers pay an average income tax rate of 25%. So they already paid roughly $500 billion in taxes on their above-threshold income. Thus, only about $1.5 trillion remains after taxes and is available for additional taxes across all taxpayers earning more than $500,000. And I know it's a lot to keep up with, but if Congress confiscated every dollar earned by individuals and businesses past their first $500,000, it would still be $200 billion short of covering the cost of next year's projected deficit. That's just next year's. Unrealistically assuming no behavioral or other economic effects from taxing 100% of earnings, like people leaving the country. Um, It shows how the math of taxing the rich gets even more challenging. Uh, the, The more income Congress exempts, Uh, The charts show that for only raising taxes on people earning over $1 million or $10 million, lowering the income threshold to $200,000 can expand income available for Congress to tax, but it is still not a realistic way to raise significant additional revenue. Common sense and economic incentives tell us that Congress cannot raise tax rates anywhere close to 100% and still bring in any new revenue. Uh, So even a substantial fraction of the available earned income above $200,000 would not cover the projected deficit. So where's the rest of the money going to come from? Well, political rhetoric about raising taxes on the rich primarily serves as a distraction from our country's fiscal reality. If spending is not constrained, large and growing deficits will remain even after taxes are raised on corporations and the wealthy. 
the only way to significantly increase revenue is by raising taxes on a broader swath of middle class Americans. Talking points like those President Biden routinely uses about the rich not paying their fair share in taxes have historically provided political cover to raise taxes on other segments of the population. Uh, tax historian Joseph Thorndike explains how high marginal income tax rates in the New Deal era were used to help justify regressive consumption taxes on alcohol and tobacco, which supplied anywhere from a third to half of the federal revenue during the early 1930s. Again, by the 40s, Thorndike explains that high marginal tax rates of 90 plus percent, even though few people paid these rates, were used to provide political cover for a dramatic downward expansion of the income tax. Narrow taxes on the rich are leveraged into mass taxes on everyone. Okay, and let's stop there for a second, because if they do increase the taxes on the wealthy and on corporations, and let's just say for the sake of argument that they do abstain from raising taxes on the middle class, we're still punished because those wealthy people that sink their billions and millions and whatever uh, into creating places for people to work is going to dry up. Prices are going to skyrocket because investors are not going to have their bottom line affected by some President Silver Alert tax code, you know, we'll call it alterations to uh, effectively let him spend recklessly. So um, <clears throat> every other large modern welfare state funds its higher levels of government spending with high taxes on a broad swath of the population. This is not because politicians in those countries do not want to tax the rich. It is because there is not enough money at the top of the income distribution to fund their desired spending levels. It's often reported as irresponsible or implausible to suggest reducing federal spending as the key mechanism to stabilize the budget. However, it is accepted at face value that we can raise more than $2 trillion in additional revenue from the highest income 1% American taxpayers. Tax the rich is not a serious budget proposal, and it should be treated as irresponsible and implausible. Now, to go into a little more detail on this budget, and I told you we were going to discuss it in pretty good depth. So uh, the budget plan unveiled on Monday would, ha would hike taxes, increase federal spending to unprecedented levels, and lock in budget deficits that average $2 trillion annually for the next decade. Yeah, you heard that right. That's $20 trillion added to the deficit over the next decade. But possibly the craziest detail is the fact that the White House is trying to frame all of that as being an exercise in fiscal restraint. No, really, it's true. In a fact sheet, quotation marks around that fact sheet, uh, released alongside the budget, the White House touted how the proposal would cut the deficit by $3 trillion over the next 10 years. Strong and shared growth that benefits all Americans isn't just good for working families and the economy. It will also lead to better fiscal outcomes, the administration claims, adding that Biden believes, quote, long-term investments in our nation and its people should be paid for. Now, it's no wonder he didn't want to go into this during State of the Union. Uh, but uh, Speaker Johnson has already said, hell no, that budget's dead on arrival in the House. So we'll see what happens. Um, someone in the White House, though, 
they might want to Google what the phrase paid for actually means. Uh, because Biden's budget assumes the federal government will keep borrowing at near record levels for the next decade. For fiscal year 25, which begins on October 1st of this year, Biden is asking Congress to spend $7.3 trillion, while the federal government will collect $5.5 trillion in taxes. That will necessitate borrowing $1.8 trillion to make the ends meet. Um, you know, I don't. Over the 10 year window covered uh, by the president's budget plan, and I, why do presidents always do this? Why do they plan their budget out for 10 years? No, no. Make your shit tight. Your budget should match your money. Period. I don't get what's so hard about this. I'm telling you right now, I could cut $1.8 trillion out of the federal government with my eyes shut and tucking the knife between my butt cheeks to do it. Now, over the 10-year window covered by this budget plan, and it's not passed, it's a proposal, budget plan proposal, federal revenues would exceed $70 trillion. The problem is, is Biden's proposing to spend $86.6 trillion in the same time period. Now, I don't know where you come from, but where I come from, that is not what paid for looks like. So what about that $3 trillion reduction in deficits that the White House is promising? That number is the result of comparing Biden's 10-year budget plan against the current baseline projections for deficits. It doesn't mean the debt will fall or stop rising. We'd have to run a surplus for that to happen. It only means that if enacted, Biden's plan would result in the national debt being $3 trillion lower in a decade than what is currently projected. He doesn't even know that that's going to hold. It's just a projection. But simply piling up debt at a slightly slower rate shouldn't pass for fiscal responsibility. Not when our government is already $34.5 trillion in debt. And what Biden is proposing to borrow more than $16 trillion over the next 10 years. And that doesn't account for any kind of unexpected crisis, a recession, a war, another viral outbreak that might push the government to borrow even more heavily. The level of borrowing under the president's budget would be unprecedented outside a war or national emergency. And that can be verified by the Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget, uh, which is a nonprofit that advocates for lower deficits. So there you go. There's your source. Uh, running annual budget deficits well in excess of one. I'm sorry, what? Oh, sounded like you were trying to cut in. Oh, why are we dead? Oh, well, that's okay. I'm talking to Rick, people, so deal with it for a second. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, yeah, we, we do need to take a break. Uh, we're at the bottom of the hour. We'll continue this when we come back. Um, Rick's going to press a button. You can stretch your legs, refill your drinks. Let your butt get on numb, but have your ass back in the seat in four and a half. That sounds about right. Anyway. Wanna get my body loose, wanna tell you, tell you what to do. I 
You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. In uncertain times, we could use someone to lean on. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma will stand by you with plan options to fit your budget. If you've recently lost your job, had a baby, or moved, you can still get the health care coverage you and your family need. Financial help may be available for those who qualify. Call 855-452-BLUE or visit hereforyouok.com to see if you're eligible to enroll. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Oklahoma, a division of Healthcare Service Corporation, a mutual legal reserve company. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree, too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. Flexible. Affordable. Relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. Call our tax experts today at 1-800-783-0810 and let us deal with the IRS while you focus on your business. That's 1-800-783-0810. Again, that's 800-783-0810. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised.
All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Top of the hour has got the red wine coming at you. I do not know who the ladies have on the couch tonight. But stay tuned because they are smart, they are funny, and they are going to keep you entertained and educated. I have absolutely no doubt. Uh, They will be tonight's nightcap. No Rick and Horty. I don't know which one's fault it is. It doesn't really matter. It really doesn't. But um, anyway, we need to continue because we got things to get to still. Um, So the level of borrowing under the president's budget proposal would be unprecedented. We talked about that right before the break. Running annual budget deficits well in excess of a trillion dollars makes even less sense when you consider the current economic environment. So the unemployment rate in the United States has been under 4% for more than two years now. So and that's good. People have gone back to work after the pandemic. We're, we're back to normal. You know, uh, America's economy grew faster than any of the world's other major economies over the last three, four years. Again, people returning to work after the pandemic. This is this is what we expected to happen. Uh, we are relatively at peace. Uh, tax revenue is hitting levels not seen uh, as far as percentages since the 60s, and Biden is proposing to raise taxes on corporations and wealthier Americans. Put simply, if you can't even get close to balancing the budget under those conditions, when the hell do you think you can? I mean, really? The White House should at least have the intellectual honesty to tell the American people that it expects them to continue financing an unstable pile of debt that will burden their children and grandchildren and sap long-term economic growth out of the country to claim that this budget is fiscally responsible is like rubbing salt into an open wound. It's just ridiculous. And if that weren't bad enough, get ready, because here comes a lot of aid for Haiti. I I can just see it. I can see it right now, because you know Hillary is going to push real hard to take care of Haiti. Oh, wait a minute. Did I say that out loud? Where, where's where's the where's the millions and millions and millions of dollars that uh, that uh, uh, that the Hill, the the Clinton family foundation uh, gave to Haiti? Remember, they were supposed to to bring them forward economically, and it seems like they've only regressed. But now we got all kinds of things brewing in Haiti. Uh, their prime minister. Uh, Ariel Henry uh, said he was resigning amid mounting international pressure following gang violence that has pushed the capital to the brink of war. Uh, Mr. Henry faced calls to resign from Haitian gang leaders who have taken control of the capital city, Port-au-Prince, keeping the prime minister stranded outside the country. Heavily armed gangs have tried to seize control of Haiti's main international airport, exchanging gunfire with police and soldiers in the latest attack on key government sites. An explosion of violence has taken place in the country, including a mass escape from the country's prisons. Uh, Now, in light of all this, we hear the horror stories that there are actually uh, Haitians. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, the chat room is on it, uh, Raptor. Raptor, hang on, you're going to love this because what I have for you, I'm building up to it. Just stay tuned, you're going to love it. Okay, so the the rumors are that there has actually been cannibalism going on. 
And when you hear this, you think, no way, no way. And Raptors in the chat room, he said, I hear they have barbecue in Haiti. But now a former elite police officer who now runs a federation of gangs and has claimed responsibility for the surge in attacks named Jimmy Barbecue Cherizet. <laughs> the dude's nickname is Barbecue. <laughs> now, how do you, you can't even make that up. I mean, really, come on. <laughs> he is a leader. Uh, yes. <laughs> the, the chat room is getting live now. <laughs> We're talking about cannibalism and a guy named Barbecue. <laughs> the uh, the Toussaint Louverture International Airport was closed when the attack occurred uh, with no planes operating and no passengers on site. It is the biggest attack on the airport in Haiti's history. And that's saying something because Haiti's been through some shit. Uh, a breakthrough has come with Mr. Henri's resignation after the Caribbean Community Regional Bloc, uh, also known as CARICOM, held, urge, held an urgent meeting of Caribbean leaders late on Monday in Jamaica. Uh, it was also attended by officials, including U.S. Secretary of State Anthony Blinken. Imagine that. The government that I am running, Henri said, cannot remain insensitive in front of this situation. There is no sacrifice that is too big for our country, he said in a video statement. Uh, the government I am running will remove itself immediately after the installation of the council. So last week, the airport was struck briefly by bullets amid ongoing gang attacks, but gangs did not enter the airport nor seize control of it. Uh, gangs were already uh, estimated to control about 80% of the capital city, and they are increasingly coordinating their actions and choosing uh, once unthinkable targets such as the central bank. Henri has remained stranded in Puerto Rico after he traveled abroad last week to try to salvage support for a United Nations-backed security force to help stabilize Haiti in its conflict with the increasingly powerful crime groups. Haiti's National Police has roughly 9,000 officers to provide security for more than 11 million people. Uh, that's per UN statistics, so I don't know how accurate that is because, you know, the UN sucks. Um, gunfire has been reported in several neighborhoods around the capital. The police are routinely overwhelmed and outgunned. Internet service for many residents was down, and as you know, this administration cannot tolerate down Internet service for people. That will require billions in aid immediately. Uh, after gangs opened fire at Haiti's International Airport last week, the U.S. Embassy said that it was halting all official travel to the country. How much traveling do we do to Haiti? Uh, you know, really, I mean, do we have people that go to Haiti just so they can come back and go, what a shithole that is? And that's all anybody's ever said about it since they ran the French out. But anyway, um, the Biden administration, which has refused to commit troops to any multinational force for Haiti, while offering money and logistical support, here comes, cha-ching, cha-ching, oh, it's a humanitarian crisis, we have to help them. How about they help themselves for a change? So why is there violence in Haiti anyway? Well, some of Haiti's most powerful gang leaders say their goal is to bring down Henri. Well, that's done now. Uh, the country has failed to hold parliamentary and general elections in recent years, and there are no elected officials. 
Henri was sworn in as prime minister with the backing of the international community after the 2021 assassination of President Jovenel Moise. Moise. I don't know. It's French. Uh, the latest round of attacks began in February after Henri pledged to hold long awaited general elections by mid 2025. How generous of him. Uh, the surge in attacks follows violent protests that turned deadlier in recent days as the prime minister went to Kenya seeking, seeking to move ahead on the proposed UN backed security mission. Uh, to be led by that Eastern African country. Uh, Barbecue said that the goal is to capture Haiti's police chief and government ministers and prevent Henri's return. Barbecue shares a... You got to like that. It just kind of rolls right off the tongue. Tangy. (laughs) He has threatened to go after hotel owners, hiding politicians, or collaborating with Henri. He demanded the country's next leader be chosen by the people and live in Haiti alongside their families. Uh, If Henri continues down this path, he will plunge Haiti into chaos, Barbecue said. We are not in a peaceful revolution. We are making a bloody revolution in the country because this system is an apartheid system and a wicked system. And, uh, yes, Raptor, I did know that. Uh, I'm a Spaniard myself, so, yes, I did. Yes, Aggie Rican would probably um, know that, too. Don't know if Aggie's in the chat room or listening, but that's a that's a good tidbit for her, you know, being a Rican and all. So, anyway, uh, the prime minister... A neurosurgeon has shrugged off calls for him to resign. Well, that's come and gone. He has now resigned uh, and did not comment when asked if he felt it was safe to come home. Uh, Henri's whereabouts were not public on Monday. Well, yeah, they were. He was in Puerto Rico. Um, So barbecue announced as gunmen began to attack infrastructure that he would try and capture the country's police chief and government. Yeah, we covered that already. Uh, Four police officers were killed when their stations came under siege. Barbecue said last summer that he would fight any international armed force if they committed abuses, and he urged Haitians to mobilize against the government. Other gang leaders also appear to be involved in the recent attacks. Uh, Johnson Andre, best known as Izzo, uh, and leader of the Five Seconds Gang, appears in a video on TikTok wielding a heavy mallet in his right hand as he pretends to punch his face with his left hand. Tough guy. Um, uh, Mr. Andre's gang is considered an ally of GPEP. Uh, Yes, there is litigation pending. I don't like them using my name like that. Uh, Arch enemy of Barbecue's Gang Federation. But alliances have been shifting in recent days. So the gangs are starting to say, enemy of my enemy. Yeah, anyway. Um, The report released last month by the Global Initiative Against Transnational Organized Crime. um, Yeah, well, uh, found that. For the gangs, the development of alliances is a fluid phenomenon. Great. I'm sure sure that makes everybody feel better. Uh, It's also noted that only the most powerful gangs, such as Izzo's and Barbecue's, are usually able to operate or profiteer outside their fiefdoms. Uh, Barbecue is a leader of a gang federation known as G9 Family and Allies, Again, with the G, they have got to get over this. I'm going to sue. I really am. Um, And, you know, this is this is what's going on in Haiti. Um, An estimated 200 gangs actually exist in Haiti. How the hell are there that many people? With 23 main gangs operating in the metro area of Port-au-Prince. 
Holy hell. Anyway. All right. Uh, so, yeah, get ready. Your, your pockets will be lifted again for humanitarian aid to Haiti. Just get ready. I, I know. I know. They'll say it's just something we have to do for our Caribbean neighbors and friends. Anyway, uh, we're getting close to it, so it is time for do, 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 geez, guaranteed happy ending. I don't think we've actually worked anything out for that yet, but we're going to. Yeah, it's all good. It's all good. So anyway, um, dramatic footage from downtown Louisville, Kentucky surfaced last week showing a tractor trailer dangling, literally, uh, over the water after nearly plummeting off the Clark Memorial Bridge. Mike, Mike, are you in the chat room still? Have you driven this bridge before, brother? It looked like a pretty good-sized bridge. Uh, the Louisville Fire Department was on the scene within three minutes and devised a plan to rescue the driver who was still trapped inside. Now, if you have not seen the photos or video footage of this, this truck, for however it got there, I don't know. I don't know what happened on the bridge. But the picture I saw had the the actual truck hanging straight down, facing the water, over the edge of the bridge, and the trailer was either right at half or almost halfway through the ironwork of the bridge. And literally, this, this trailer could have been ripped in half by the bridge, uh, it, it, the the rig could have broken loose from where it connects to the trailer. There's just so many different things that could have happened. Um, Fire Chief Brian O'Neill said the rescue method used is known as a pickoff. Uh, when firefighter Bryce Carden was lowered with a harness and reached the driver, she was still belted into the truck's cab. Uh, thanks to a tremendous team effort, the woman was safely back on the bridge within 40 minutes. The first responders did an amazing job, um, you know, the department's spokesperson said. All credit goes to these folks. Uh, gesturing to a line of fire department members, uh, they they train for this stuff all the time. And you can, you can actually go to uh, the, the Good News Network website. And you can see they have a link for the video along with the still photo. It is freaking amazing. And this, this is where we throw the word hero out there, uh, not at a climate change summit or WEF or anything like that. Uh, she is incredibly fortunate that the truck threaded the needle of those bridge. Uh, uh, I, I don't even know what we're going to call them. Uh, but it got it got wedged in the bridge, and that's what held it. The very thing that could have shredded it held it in place long enough for them to do their thing. And since we still have about a minute or two left, I'm going to do a double happy ending. So not just an O face, but an O O face. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. <laughs> Through a charity supported by his father when he was alive, Wolfgang Van Halen has donated $100,000 to launch a special program to support public schools to acquire instruments for their music programs. For decades, budgetary debate has remained heated about the importance or the lack of music programs in public schools. And Mr. Van Halen is stepping in to ensure educators who believe in the power of music to enrich educational experience have the resources to confer it to their students. Working with the Mr. Holland's Opus Foundation, Van Halen has launched the Adopt-A-School campaign, 
which connects qualifying schools across the country in need of musical instruments with donors interested in supporting music education within a community of their choice. Music has been a huge part of my life, and it's our family's great pleasure to help support music education programs and bring the gift of music to students across the country, said Wolfgang Van Halen. Music education has proven to be a huge contributor toward a student's success in school and in life. Some studies have shown that music classes promote academic excellence and other positive outcomes in school. Um, despite this, music is famously one of the first programs to get crushed under the weight of budgetary constraints, and our mission is to make sure there is an instrument in the hands of every student who needs and wants one by increasing schools' inventories of quality, playable instruments. Music teachers will have the tools they need to deliver a quality music education to students who want to learn. And according to Guitar World, the project was developed off the back of a national survey that found 68% of educators had experienced at least one instance of turning an interested student away from music education because of a lack of resources like instruments. Also in the survey, which included 225 schools, students were found to struggle in classes uh, from using instruments that were in need of repair. Uh, but which the school had no money to pay for. Eddie Van Halen, Wolfgang's father and the virtuoso guitar player from the band Van Halen, for those of you that have lived under a rock for the last 50 years, uh, was a devoted supporter of Mr. Holland's Opus Fund, and the charity work he began is carried on by his son now, donating $100,000 to kickstart the Adopt-a-School campaign in 100 schools nationwide. Friends, that's the show. If you can't get happy about those last two, I don't know what makes you happy. Um, it's good stuff all the way around. And that's it. If you like the show, tell your friends. If your friends like it, you need new ones. But they and you are welcome with me every Wednesday on KLRN Radio, America's podcast network, home of the conservative curmudgeon show. I'm your host, The Grouch. Peace. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. I've been here for seven years.